Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth Miller, practitioner at Vallejo Health and Wellness Center in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, and I'm here with Dr. Aaron Moreland, owner and practitioner at Vallejo today. Um, hi. <laughs> so one of the things that is on my mind a lot lately, because I actually signed up to get this done, but is these OptiThyroplex labs uh -huh. that yeah. we have here at the office. And I have to admit, I am extremely needle phobic. Like sure. every time I go in, I give I give the phlebotomist a warning, like, hey, I'm I don't do well with needles. They ask me if I need to lay down and I'm like, yes. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I am terrified. And I so you can get your blood drawn. You're lying down for not oh my, like donating blood. Oh, but. yeah. No. Like anything that has to do with a needle, it's like, <laughs> sure. I need to lay yeah. down. Yeah. Um, and I would say you're, you're not alone in that. I don't know what the percentage of people that deal with that uh, phobia of needle, needles. Uh, when we were in chiropractic school, we had to do, like we learned to become phlebotomists. And so we had to do blood draws on okay. each other. And some of us had no problem. I can sit there and watch it. Uh, the guy I would always work with was like a bodybuilder, so his mm -hmm. veins just popped out. Mm -hmm. It was super easy to find, but some people, you could absolutely hated it. Some people passed out, they fainted, so I'm not sure if that's happened to you. But I think that's a big reason why some people won't go get blood drawn because they don't want to have to go through that whole trauma of getting their blood drawn. Right, and it can be really traumatic, and so I wanted to talk to you today about those labs to kind of cover, like, why would someone, especially someone like me who's so scared of needles, why would they really want to get these labs yeah. done? And you obviously decided that you're going to go through that trauma. You're going to, you're going to face yes. that fear. Yes. And the reason why, I'm assuming, is because you know that it's more important to find out what that test is going to show you than it is to deal like to have to have that fear and so it's good to right. know and there's only one way to get that blood out and so um, I would say that those people that are afraid of it um, to do like what you're saying to let the phlebotomist know um, especially going to phlebotomist usually they're really good at taking blood yeah and they deal with that kind of stuff all the time they draw blood on all kinds of people, and so there. A lot of times, you wouldn't even know if you look away. You wouldn't even know. I do look away. Yeah, and, <laughs> and so so I'd encourage that. But I do. I think that the test is just too important to um, let that fear uh, mm -hmm. stop you from getting that blood test. Yeah, and I know, like I have increased motivation to do this because I do have a history of some health concerns. But I was talking to my husband about it too, and encouraging him to get. It. And he's like, well. Is this even a, a, a blood panel that should be done for men, or is it more yeah. like women targeted panel? Yeah, especially when you hear opti thyroplex. Yeah. Because thyro really implies that it's looking at the thyroid, and that is one of the things that it's looking at. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the statistics, you will see that more women deal with thyroid right, problems. Right, heavily but, women. Yeah, definitely men do as well, but that's not the only thing we're looking at. The only reason it's called thyroplex is it's because it's an added on to all the other blood labs that we do. So the blood okay. labs are gonna look at people's iron levels, they're gonna look at their blood sugar, they're gonna look at their uh, red blood cell count, their white blood cell count, uh, mm -hmm. white blood cell differential. It's gonna look at a full thyroid panel. It's gonna look at um, inflammatory yeah. markers, minerals, so electrolytes. It's gonna look at vitamin, vitamin D. Yep, vitamin D, yep. And it's also gonna look at liver enzymes. Plus, okay. there's also a urinalysis in it, so it's gonna look at kidney function. So we actually have it on the board here. This is all the things that when we run this test that we're gonna look for. Okay. And so you can see that that list is very long compared that is to- That extensive. If you, yeah, if you've been to your doctor and had just a typical blood draw done for a physical, you, you know that it's not going to give you this many mm -hmm. numbers. So it's right. this thing shows you a lot of information. So it's not just looking at a, a thyroid and just it's, men deal with thyroid issues as well. And I'll right. show you that in a second here. And one of my other questions with this too, as I was discussing it with my husband, it's like, well, you know, he doesn't have any symptoms of anything. Obviously, like I'm motivated to do it partly because I have had like past medical problems but he really hasn't so mm -hmm. he's like yeah. well is this even something I would bother doing and that's the same I mean really that's the whole idea of a physical is mm -hmm. most people don't feel like they have anything going on but a physical can catch things that you don't know are going on because you can't feel them I literally just had a patient come in and she came in just for chiropractic care do you have anything going on no I feel great 
we started doing um, the, the chiropractic adjustment mm-hmm. and um, I do a lot of muscle work and right away she's like okay yeah yes I do have something going on I just didn't know it, yeah, that I had that yeah. going on and that's the same with the physical you can have stuff going on that you have no idea like a good example of your analysis is going to look at kidney function mm-hmm. um, before you even can get a urinalysis it shows that there's a problem you have to have up you have to have lost up to 60 percent of your kidneys function and before you have symptoms where you feel problems with your kidneys you usually have to lose about 90 to 95 percent of function before you even feel it oh, so wow. you don't want to wait till these things like we know that heart disease is called the, the silent killer right well this is going to look at things like cholesterol and such that can be um, indications that there's a heart problem like uh, homocysteine okay. but you can't feel those things you can't tell me like you know what's your homocysteine level right now you have to have a blood test yeah. to show you that so basically you know if we do a little metaphor here something like a heart attack might be like a tornado and this is kind of like that siren that kind of alerts you in advance For sure. like hey yep. you know you need to do something about this or yeah. This is gonna yep. hit. And so that's the whole purpose of physical is to catch mm-hmm. things way before they're symptomatic because right. if you wait till they're symptomatic, you've probably had that condition for many years. So it's early detection. It's not prevention per se, but it is early detection. Yeah. And so I know you, you kind of mentioned this briefly at the beginning too, but a lot of people then might also be afraid to get something like this done because they're they just don't want to know. Mm-hmm. Like they're nervous to get the results. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know what to say to that again. Um, ignorance is not bliss, mm-hmm. um, that uh, if you have something going on, if you know about it, it's just much better to take care of it when it's at its early stages, not when it's uh, um, symptomatic, because right. just because you don't um, want to see it doesn't mean that it's not going to present itself later on in right. life. Right, it's yeah. not like, you know, when you're a kid and it's like, okay, if, if I can't see <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. you can't see me yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, it's there. It, it is, like I said, Ignoring it does not make it go mm-hmm. away. Right, exactly. So that being said, like, can you talk a little bit more? Yeah. About so we have these. This is a very specific person's labs, and the reason uh-huh. I wanted to show these labs is because we do what we call functional lab ranges. And so when we do a blood test, as you can see, we do a lot of testing. Uh-huh. But then the other thing is we look at it from a pattern, so we don't just look at certain numbers. We look at all the numbers and see how does that play um, together. What does that mean? Because well, a thyroid issue can cause a cholesterol issue. Yeah, like everything, everything's connected. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. And then we use a lot more narrow ranges. So this okay. is an example of a lady that came in, and uh, she was dealing with some significant fatigue. She couldn't lose weight. Had uh, um, kind of your classic thyroid symptoms. Yeah, I was just gonna say yep. that's what it sounds like. Yeah, and so she went into the doctor and the mm-hmm. first time they did her tests, all they do, and typically when people go get their thyroid tested, because um, she said, oh, I've had my thyroid tested and it's fine, right. and they did a TSH test. And if you look at their range of a TSH, it's anywhere from 0.2 to 5.0 is usually what it is. And Which so, doesn't necessarily sound broad, but for thyroid, that's pretty yeah, broad. Yeah, it's very broad compared to like a functional would be 1.8 to 3.0. Okay. okay. So she went in and her, and her TSH was slightly high. Okay. okay. And so um, they actually did um, dig a little deeper after that, mm-hmm. and that's what this test shows. But her TSH was 5.16. So we're talking just over the top as far as um, being ranges. over normal. So a high TSH would tell you that, oh, this person's uh, body's telling you we need more thyroid hormone, and so it would it's trying to stimulate the thyroid to make more, okay? okay? And if you look at her markers, as far as her total T4, which is the hormone that the thyroid puts out, and your total T3, which is what your thyroid puts out, they actually would fall within the normal range of, uh, of what, um, what the typical doctor's mm-hmm. numbers would look at. But if you look at ours, it actually showed that they were um, just within the, the um, range, if not maybe a little bit low, okay? okay? But if you look at her antibodies against her thyroid, in zero to 34 is normal, and that's actually in um, functional and in, in typical oh, lab okay. markers. Uh, she was a thousand plus. 
Wow. So she, what that tells you is she absolutely has Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. Yeah. Okay? And so, again, if they just keep looking at her TSH, they would have never picked up on that. So, mm -hmm. so this was the medical doctor who actually dug a little deeper, but a lot of times they would just say, well, that doesn't look too bad. We're just going to leave it and, and your thyroid's normal. Or let's wait till, let's do it in the year again and see how it looks, see if it got yeah. worse. So, obviously, one of the things about these labs is that they dig deeper than, sure. yep. than other labs, not only because they test more things, but also because we compare them against functional ranges. And so thyroid issues are definitely one of the, the hidden things that you can discover from doing these labs. But what might some other kind of hidden things that this can Yeah, and so reveal? when you look at her tests here, you can see that they actually did um, dig deep into a few things. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, that, but they didn't flag them, we flagged them. One of the things is their homocysteine levels are high. So anything less than seven is normal, mm -hmm. while hers was 10 and, and, and the previous one was 12.6. That's okay. a really good indicator of you're headed down a path of heart disease. And so oh, it's an wow. inflammatory marker and it can tell you that you have inflammation in your body. Total cholesterol is 285. Well, she's got hypothyroidism, so her cholesterol is gonna go up. So. Uh, that's the key is if you just go in again and look at oh you got high cholesterol mm -hmm. well if you don't know it's because of thyroid you would treat just the cholesterol you would not do anything for right. thyroid and if you treat the thyroid um, you're actually going to help her cholesterol levels and ultimately because it's Hashimoto's it's an autoimmune disease so you treat the immune system is why mm -hmm. you fix this problem not mm -hmm. treating your thyroid not treating your cholesterol level so you can see how you don't take that one number um, is high approach to try to fix someone's total health. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. really interesting that, you know, doing this approach tells us so much and really gets at what she needs to be focusing on rather than, like you said, taking everything as something separate. Absolutely, yep. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you another um, person's labs. Okay. And so you can see someone that got the full markers done. So. Yeah. And so okay, so this we, is the OptiThyroplex. So this is the one that went and got the full panel. Now, this is what we typically see. On the right here, you'll see that he went in and got normal, just what you would get during a physical. And so you can see he had about... So that's like this column. Here. Yeah, that's that right column. So okay. you can see he really had about a dozen markers done but you can mm -hmm. see how when we did it we ran a lot more yeah and so this guy came in this is a great example it goes back to what your uh, um, husband was talking about this is a guy that has no symptoms like feels great right so that. first of all male second of yep. all no, yep. no symptoms feeling like hey everything's working well I don't yeah. have any problems and so when we look at some of his um, blood markers we can see that there's a lot of good things, like blood sugar is good. You can uh -huh, see we did a uh -huh. hemoglobin A1C, that's looking good. Triglycerides, now his total cholesterol would uh, register high, but we also look at someone's VLDL, which is not just looking at the LDL cholesterol, but the VLDL, and it was uh, well within the normal range, so that uh, even though his LDL is high, his VLDL, which is more of a, a negative one, that's mm -hmm. within the normal range, so we look at it like, okay, yeah, it's, your cholesterol's a bit high, but are we gonna really um, focus on that? Well, mm -hmm. let's look at his homocysteine levels. Oh, his homocysteine, 11.6, and we don't want it to be any higher than um, six to eight, and really seven is the ideal is where we mm -hmm. want people to be, mm -hmm. and he was at 11.6, so wow. we can see inflammation. Well, we come down to his, his um, uh, white blood cell differential, and we can see that even though his white blood cell count was in the normal, his neutrophils were really high and his lymphocytes were very low. And that's an indication that he's probably got a bacterial infection going on. Interesting. And then, yeah, and so we can look at that. And again, these would probably be flagged as normal in most testing. And right. then we look at his monocytes, 10. Um, it tells us he's got chronic inflammation in his body. Okay. So now if we look at his functional TSH, mm -hmm. it needs to be between 1.8 and 3.0, he was at 2.38. So even in functional, he's normal. Mm -hmm. But then when we look at his total thyroid output, both of them were significantly low. Oh, and wow. so, and same with his free T3, and so mm -hmm. we look at um, that being an issue, and then get talking to him, he's like, yeah, my energy is like tanked, it's super low. Again, this is a guy that comes in feeling 
says he feels good. Right. Um, says I don't have any problems till we show him his blood labs, and he's like, well, yeah, I guess I do have these things. So. Yeah, and that's interesting too, just because especially with like energy fatigue, like people nowadays think that's so normal. Yeah. yeah. And it's like it's it's common. It's very common to be very tired. It's common to feel fatigued. It's still not normal. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you talk to a lot of people, they're all tired all the time, so mm -hmm. I guess yeah, that's just part of aging. Right. Because this guy is in his um, early 60s, okay. um, so it must be just normal to have that, but you can see that his thyroid um, output is not good at all. And then his vitamin D levels were at 18.8. Here's a guy that's actually taking vitamin D, and yet his uh, levels mm -hmm. are, are too low. Um, because we want people to be between 50 and 80. So you can see, again, you can see that we flag some things. Some are low, but they're really, you know, on the borderline, so we watch for them. But we also look at, well, we look at how does that pattern play out. And when we look at that, that tells us um, so much more than just looking at one number. So that's right. why the blood labs are just absolutely important. For, yeah. for health and, uh, and like I said, getting a, a very comprehensive blood lab, blood lab is a lot more important mm -hmm. than just getting a blood lab. Right, because for example, like if they never noticed that there was maybe a bacterial infection, you yeah, know, they're never going to do anything about it. Because, right, so you're just <laughs> going about your day to day with this infection. Yeah, I mean, if you just had your white blood cell count looked at, which most mm -hmm. people do, they would say, well, looks normal, so there's mm -hmm. no problem there. Okay, well. One of the reasons I'm getting the labs done this month, too, um, is that we have a special on them this mm -hmm. month. So can you tell me a little bit more about, like, the cost of these labs and specifically? Yeah, absolutely. So um, typically when we do a blood lab, it takes we do spend a lot of time, as you can see, we look at patterns and such. We yeah. spend a lot of time looking at it. We don't just let the lab tell us low, high. Right. We look at that pattern, so it takes a lot of interpreting. Um, to determine um, what's going on with someone's health. Mm -hmm. And so during the month of August, we're waiving that interpretation fee. So it's $100 off of those blood labs. So that's, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, it's a great deal. And uh, if everything looks great, we'll just uh, let that person know, hey, things look great. Um, if they're not looking great, then we will sit down with that person. And this is included in the, the cost of the labs. Mm -hmm. We will sit down with that person, tell them what's going on, and tell them what they need to do to intervene to wow. make a change. That's really cool because I'm sure, like you know, when he came back and was maybe feeling a little bit overwhelmed, like, okay, so these, you know, I was afraid to get these results and <laughs> well, you know, I, I think what, what to do, but you help. Yeah, and, after. And, and I know this gentleman very specifically that what he came away from that with, thinking that one that he was feeling, he thought he was fine, he had no mm -hmm. issues, but he did have issues, and I think the reason why he felt he had no issues is because he had been to doctors before, had these tests done, not to this comprehensive, but had tests done, everything came back normal, so then he just uh, decided, well, I, then this, how I feel is just normal. Wow. Having that test done, having us show him what's going on, was very um, freeing for him, because he's like, oh, there this is, is something wrong This is why I feel this me. way. Exactly, and there's something that I can do about it. Okay, interesting. Well, I don't know if there's anything else in particular that you wanted to share. Beyond no, what I, I think that again, um, just to reiterate that um, uh, getting a physical is not because you're trying to figure out what's wrong with your body. Mm -hmm. Typically, um, most people go to a doctor because there's something going on. They don't right. go even for a physical. Physicals are to determine, to determine where you're at with your health right now and make sure that there's nothing going on that could pop up years from now that um, if you had known about it years prior, you could have mm -hmm. did something about mm -hmm. it. It's trying to figure things out in an early stage so that you can take care of it when it's easy to take care of. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of my friend who didn't really pay attention to when her car needed an oil change. Was just kind of like, oh, you know, like I'm just going to keep driving. Like, yeah. no big deal. My, my, my car is working fine. Yeah, why and would then it, it really wasn't fine, yeah. and she found out it's because she didn't change her oil, and so it's one of those... Yeah, a $40 or $30 fix versus uh, thousands right. of dollars to fix right. a new engine. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the Absolutely. time to share this with us. If people have any additional questions about the labs or anything, um, just calling us at our office, which is 952 nine four nine zero six seven six otherwise visiting us online at www.valeowc.com
Cool. Yeah, I think that's all we've got for you.